Uh, today I thought we will go with the uh, physics topic heat. The topic is for class 7, heat and temperature. But actually in a, after um, uh, class 7, if you are going to take uh, heat and uh, temperature, nothing much relevant on heat and temperature, but we have the combustion lesson. There is one lesson on combustion and flame where we are learning about some ignition temperature and all in class 8. After that, it's only with um, uh, class 9, 10 and class 11 also in physics, some of the topics are dealt in. So I thought a small introduction about heat. I thought I'll give a small introduction on heat before starting with the lesson. Before starting with the lesson, I would like to share with you an anecdote from the life of a great scientist. Shall I, uh, there was a school, right? As a, a professor was there. He was an atheist. Atheist means who doesn't believe in existence of God. An atheist. He was asking, he was, um, asking questions to his students. Uh, uh, sir, again it is... Uh, Dharmendra, sir, again it is... Um, shall I mute? Yes, I, I muted it. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Shall I continue? Uh, there was a class going on and there was a professor... And this professor is an atheist who doesn't believe in the existence of God. And he was uh, posting question to his students. He's, um, he was telling his students, uh, like, uh, all of us uh, say there is God. If there is God, there should not be any evil happenings that are uh, there. Like uh, some murders, some thefts. So, uh, because all these things are happening around us, there is no God. It's only evil that is existing. He tries to make uh, students, he's convincing the students that there is no such thing as God. It's only evil thing that is present. So uh, if there is God, God would have not allowed all these things to happen. So it, there is no God. He's trying to tell them that there is no God. Am I clear, teachers? Right? And then, now nobody uh, was... Um, uh, 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 nobody can uh, give an uh, answer for his question. The way he was posing the question, he was just challenging the students. He was just saying, there is no God at all. Because there are evil things that are happening around us, there is no God at all. So it is only evil things that is present and there is no God. Now, there is some, um, uh, suddenly, uh, suddenly one boy raised his hand. And suddenly one boy raised his hand. Uh, he was um, uh, trying to uh, trying to convince the professor by saying that that is God. Now he asked some questions to the professor. The first question was, he asked, sir, please tell me whether there is darkness. So he was asking the question, uh, sir, tell me whether there is darkness. Now sir said, of course, darkness do exist. Uh, we can see at nights, we can see this darkness. Darkness is present. All right. And now the boy said, sir, there is nothing as darkness. It is only the absence of light. There is no such property as darkness. It is only the absence of light we call as darkness. So he said, he told everybody it's the absence of light called as darkness. The second thing again, the child asked, uh, so now tell me, does cold exist? He said, of course, cold do exist. It's uh, all the polar regions are very cold. So cold is one property that exists. Now the boy said, there is nothing as cold. It's only the absence of heat. When there is an absence of heat, we call that as cold. Now he said, uh, now he's trying to uh, tell all right. So he said, uh, there is nothing as some um, cold. It is only the absence of heat. Heat is only the property. Now he concluded. Now he asked the professor again. He asked the professor, sir, now you tell me, does evil exist? Sir was not able to answer. He was just, uh, he was not able to connect. Now, sir, he justified by saying, there is nothing as evil. It is only the absence of God in the hearts of human, we call that as evil. So he just proved 
and challenged the professor by these words. And this person is nothing. He only became Albert Einstein. He's none other than Albert Einstein. So he, even in his childhood, he was able to uh, understand better the property of heat, the property of light, and he also proved the existence of God. So I thought I will share this anecdote before starting with heat. Now I will continue share, uh, share screen for heat. Yes, ma'am. my screen visible teachers yes ma'am yes, ma yes, ma so today we are going to uh, see about heat and temperature now yesterday day before yesterday we learned about sound like that now we are going for heat again if you are going for heat heat is again a form of energy and temperature is the measure of how hot an object is. Even when we are going for a concept mapping for this, if you want to do a concept mapping for this, again, we should start with energy. Energy is the capacity to do work and different forms of energy. One form of energy is heat energy. From heat energy, you have to branch out for temperature. From temperature, you should branch out for the thermometer. And from the thermometer, clinical thermometer and lab thermometer. And again, from the clinical thermometer, you can say about the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scale and the Kelvin scale. Right, Like this, we can uh, proceed with the uh, concept mapping. And again, from, from that, from one branch, we can take the heat transfers, the different types of heat transfers, where we can speak about the conduction, convection, and radiation by giving examples. In that way, we can make a concept mapping for this. So we will start with the energy. And from the energy, the kinds of uh, energy, different kinds of energy, one kind of energy is heat energy. From heat energy, we are branching out. Well, and then from heat energy, we are saying about temperature and then the thermometer, and then about the types of thermometer, clinical and the lab thermometer, and then the Celsius scale used Fahrenheit and Kel uh, Kelvin scale. And then we'll proceed with the heat transfers, conduction, convection, and radiation. We are having one concept map for this. It will give us a clear idea about this. Now, now we know what is meant by heat. Heat is a form of energy. And we also know what is temperature. And temperature is how hot. It will tell us how hot the object is. It's a measure of hotness of the object. So children should be able to uh, differentiate between heat and temperature. Heat is a form of energy and temperature is the measure of how hot the object is. That's it. The second one, proceed with the type of thermometer. The first uh, thermometer that is explained in our reader is the clinical thermometer. Right. So in this, the clinical thermometer, what are the things we should um, remember? One minute, teachers. Okay. So now, um, uh, what is a clinical thermometer? I told you uh, to uh, measure uh, that to measure how hot a substance. We use the uh, measurement in the form of the temperature. Temperature is a measure of how hot a thing is. For that, we use a device. We call that as thermometer. There are different types of thermometers. Uh, like clinical thermometer, laboratory thermometer. Now, uh, all these things are replaced by, complete my sentence, teachers. What do we go for after this corona? Thermometers are replaced it's by? Digital. Uh, digital. Uh, digital body scanners. No contact. Without any contact, they can find out the temperature, right? So body scanners are being used in the places of thermometers nowadays, right? So uh, as for our, uh, because for uh, maybe scanners also, body scanners will also be in introduced in NCRT in short. But till then, we will also explain them about clinical thermometers. And now we have digital thermometers, which is a higher version of it, right? In, the, in a clinical thermometer, it consists of a small bulb at one side and then a glass tube with the ma marking, with the readings there. One side, if you check, it will have the Celsius, uh, scale another side it will have the Fahrenheit scale. <coughs> Usually, 
for <clears throat> uh, for a clinical thermometer it starts from 35 degrees celsius till 42 degrees celsius and uh, we have the liquid that is present inside the clinical thermometer is what is the name what is the liquid that we generally use for a clinical mercury. thermometer mercury ma'am why do we prefer mercury it is the only liquid matter yes so only liquid matter it's a liquid metal fine anything else anything melting else? point melting point and related has to the no melting point Ah. Melting point is very on heating. It expands gradually, ma'am. That's it. ah uniform expansion. Very nice. Okay, so it undergoes uniform expansion. That is the reason we have chosen mercury as the uh, as the liquid in the clinical thermometer. And another important thing when we are speaking about clinical thermometer, we should insist on what is it? The structure of clinical thermometer. What we should insist on? It has a small constriction near the bulb. What is this constriction called, the teachers? Kink. Kink. Uh, what is the purpose of this kink? Prevent the movement of uh, mercury back to the bulb. Very nice, Kala ma'am. Right? It prevents the back movement of uh, mercury into the bulb. Now, uh, what is the advantage? Because of it, what we can do with that? Yes, Kala ma'am. Participate. Nice. Yes. Ah. Measurement, body temperature measure. Ah, so when we are measuring the body temperature, so the, the kink there prevents the flow of the mercury back into the bulb. So if you are going to take it out from the body also, the temperature can be red. Am I clear, teachers? So when we are using the clinical thermometer, either under the tongue, now all these things are over. You cannot keep it under the tongue, even though you are sterilizing it. Now we are going for uh, digital thermometers. We know body scanners, but still we will tell them this was used before like that. So initially we will keep it under the tongue or uh, near the arms and all where the temperature is easily red. And then when we are taking it out of the body, the temperature can be red. The temperature will not fall down. So that is one additional advantage. And that is because of the presence of kink. Am I clear, teachers? The purpose of the kink is prevents the falling down of the mercury inside the bulb. This needs some mention. The children should understand. And another important thing is why should we not hold the thermometer with the bulb? Can we hold the thermometer with the bulb? No. Can we hold no. the thermometer by holding the bulb? No, ma'am. Why? No, ma why? Variation in the reading will be there. Louder, ma'am. Variation will be there, ma'am, in the reading. Yes. Yes. It will start showing the temperature of your finger. Right? So, to avoid that, we should hold it on the other side, not near the bulb. And before using the thermometer, clinical thermometer, a lot of precautions need to be followed. First, we should give some jerk, adjust the mercury level. And it should be made sterile and it should not be hit against any other things. It should be used properly. So this is about a clinical thermometer and it is used to measure only the body temperature. Why can't we use a clinical thermometer to measure the boiling uh, point of water? A lot of uh, hot questions can be asked. Why questions? Justify questions? Give reason questions? The whole lesson is like that. Can anybody tell me why? Yes. Boiling point has more than 100 degrees. Yes. 100 degrees Celsius alone. Ah. You can measure using the uh, <coughs> clinical thermometer uh, to 37 degrees Celsius alone. Uh, to? Till, till what? 90, 98 degrees Fahrenheit alone we can able to measure. Yes. That. So we cannot go for 100 degrees 100 Celsius degrees. Uh, with the help of a clinical thermometer. We cannot use it for measuring 100 degree Celsius because it shows only till 42 degrees. Right? So we cannot use it. What will happen if you are going to keep it in a boiling water? What will happen if you are going to keep a clinical thermometer in boiling water? It will break. 
because the mercury inside will expand and finally it will result in breaking there will be a small glass tube inside that a capillary tube through which the mercury can flow and you can easily see that so that is um, all these things need to be explained for the child and uh, by means of posting questions all right and uh, we use uh, the only uh, uh, liquid uh, metal mercury that is being used in thermometers and also we should speak about uh what disposing mercury is it should be a careful act because it's very poisonous handling mercury is also should be very carefully handled because it's a poisonous liquid metal all these things get on and then comes the precautions so every time when we are going to use a clinical thermometer we uh, children must be knowing this very nicely nowadays with our antiseptic solution so we go for a body scanner we don't even opt for this and um, we are going for uh, uh, some other methods like a clinical uh, digital thermometer also we are using all these are better uh, methods than a clinical thermometer what i feel personally and then we every time we use it we should check whether it's below mercury level is below 35 degrees celsius and then um, it should be uh, while you are reading the thermometer it should be kept at the level according to our eyesight why should we keep it like that and read why can't we keep like this below your eye level why should we keep along the line of sight why can't we keep it below accurate measurement ma'am pardon accurate measurement for getting the accurate measurement right and otherwise if you are not going to keep it direct to your line of sight what will happen there is something called parallax error if you are going to look into it straight you will get the correct accurate measurement you look it at the sides also an error occurs and that is called parallax error because of our position of the eyes it will appear wrong so that all these to be uh, explained to children and handling the thermometer with care because it is made up of glass and we will never hold it with the bulb while reading it because it will show the temperature of our fingers so all these are the precautions now coming to a laboratory thermometer which we call it as lab thermometer very often asked question is comparison between a clinical and a lab thermometer a lab thermometer usually some of the some of them will use uh, mercury some of them will use alcohol and the temperature ranges will be between minus 10 degrees celsius to 110 degrees celsius the range is quite more than the range that we see in a clinical thermometer so this is the best suitable option for finding out finding out temperature temperature of water boiling point of water or uh, freezing point of water or ice all this can be done in the laboratory by using this because the range is quite more when compared to the clinical thermometer <coughs> so this has to be insisted <coughs> while using the lab thermometer a very important thing that we should insist on is the lab thermometer should be in contact to the substance for which you are measuring the temperature sometimes what happens is they keep the lab thermometer in such a way the bulb touches the uh, uh, beaker the uh, wall of the beaker can we keep like that can we keep make the bulb touch the wall mm -hmm. of the beaker instead of no. the wall what mm -hmm. will happen it should be in the content of the book yes it should touch the content it should touch the content otherwise it will show the temperature of the beaker only not the water so we should be very careful while using the lab thermometer and uh, another thing is can we take out the lab thermometer from the uh, liquid and can we tell the reading is it correct no ma'am it is no, not possible no ma'am because uh, why should uh, why why no that the ink is not available uh... very good yes so it, this has to be insisted since there is no kink if you are going to take it out then what temperature we will get it will be only the outer temperature room, room temperature. temperature yes then the thermometer will show only the room temperature so that has to be insisted for seventh class children right so if you are going to take out the lab thermometer from the substance for which you are finding out the measurement then the temperature of the room only will be shown 
so because there is no kink so that is the value of kink here sometimes laboratory thermometer also uses alcohol it has a bulb a thread of alcohol will go through the capillary tube and you can even explain about the readings there so that is what is some um, lab thermometer and some of the models of lab thermometers can be uh, shown and how we use a lab thermometer generally the lab thermometer is fixed to a nearby stand fixed to a nearby stand and then you are going to keep the beaker containing the boiling water allow the water to boil by uh, uh, keeping a burner below and exactly you can get the boiling point or keeping it in the ice in the ice without uh, allowing the bulb to touch the bottom of the container it should be suspended and it should be uh, in contact only with the ice or in contact with the boiling water the bulb then only we get the correct readings so you can ask them to note down this can be either a demonstration for class 7 level it's better to be a demonstration we can demonstrate we can ask them to come closer to us and then look at the uh, reading and note down three times we can uh, change it and um, uh, once we are keeping the ice blocks for some time after some time the temperature will come down because of radiation right so we can ask him ask the child to note down the readings and then he will be able to uh, read from the laboratory thermometer so uh, showing the laboratory thermometer is important a demonstration is very very important whenever we are doing a demonstration as in um, a methodology ask the child to write it as an activity write it as an activity like uh, ask him to write as what is the aim of the experiment what is the uh what are the apparatus that are being used and uh, what is the procedure for the experiment and then ask him for the next level what is the observation what is the inference then only it will be complete so ask the child to note down all these things whenever you are doing a demonstration then only the activity will be complete right first time when the child is writing in class 6 when he is writing he may not be very uh good in writing but as he uh, as it goes on whenever you are demonstrating ask him to take the observation note let him write on his own let there be some mistakes don't worry maybe by class 8 when the child reaches he will be able to do a good job slowly he will learn he should not miss this he should observation should be a proper observation uh, some children know in many uh, many times have seen observation and uh, inference there will be some conclusion uh, there will be some confusion between the two so observation is what they see and inference is what they infer from the observation that has to be registered so that way train the children the next one is um, if we go for the next slide yes so again finding the melting point for finding out the melting point again the same thing the thermometer is suspended lab thermometer we have an iron stand and the beaker containing ice and then we can ask the child to find out the melting point and writing the uh, observation clearly like degrees celsius properly to be written degrees celsius and the value to be written properly and without any parallax error the child should be able to write it down all these things are needed the next one again for a for a precautions that should be followed for a laboratory thermometer the first thing it should not be tilted because it will give a wrong value it should be surrounded from all sides from the substance for which the temperature has to be measured it should not touch the surface of the container all these three things are very very important and one more additional thing is you should not take out the thermometer from the container and then you cannot read it because if you read like that then you will get the room temperature only it is not the temperature of the boiling water or the ice it will become only the room temperature because there is no kink needs to be insisted all these things to be insisted am i clear teachers shall i proceed yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yes. yes so the next one after the explain yes. about the clinical yes. thermometer and the lab, lab thermometer let us um, this you can ask them to do on their own once you have explained it then ask them to find uh, the different shade find the difference or distinguish between lab thermometer and clinical thermometer it becomes an application so this becomes an application when you are writing the uh, uh, objectives 
the objectives will be the child will be able to distinguish between clinical thermometer and lab thermometer and then what will be the outcome outcome will be the child will be able to uh, draw and label the parts of a clinical thermometer draw and label the parts of the laboratory thermometer uh, distinguish uh, uh, the structure of clinical thermometer and the laboratory thermometer differentiate between the clinical and laboratory thermometer on the basis of its uses all this can be your lear learning outcome so your first thing if you you are just explaining the structure from that you are getting the differentiation as you pose the question the child will be able to give out the difference between the two so your learning outcomes is achieved so that's what so your clinical thermometer is mainly used to measure the body temperature what is our normal body temperature teachers this 37 degrees celsius 37 98.4 degrees celsius 98.4 degrees celsius degree fahrenheit fahrenheit yes so that is our normal body temperature right so after telling for finding out the clear uh, no body temperature only clinical thermometer can be used if you are going to use it for finding out the temperature of the boiling tea or boiling water it will break because mercury cannot expand inside that capillary tube there is no place for the mercury to expand and so it will break so all this can be uh, explained and then differentiation and then the first one is body temperature here for the temperature of different substances in the laboratory and then the readings readings can be compared and about the presence of kink there is no kink and uh, we always give uh, jerks to this um, clinical thermometer before the use which is not needed in the case of laboratory thermometer because automatically it falls down when you take it out from the contact from the substance so all these differences can be uh, said so it should be in contact with the substance it need not be in contact with the substance and then there is no kink i've shared one this and then the next one is this is for most of the olympiad questions and all very often asked question conversion of fahrenheit celsius and kelvin now kelvin is only the si unit of temperature si unit is kelvin in the name of the scientist or a person who had contributed a lot in the field of physics kelvin right so based on his name only they have given kelvin and that is only the si unit si unit is standard unit of measurement right the other two units are being practiced in different parts of the world celsius and fahrenheit so this conversion is very very important so converting uh, celsius uh, to fahrenheit or fahrenheit to celsius converting celsius to kelvin and kelvin to celsius all this are very very important it's only the formula and from fahrenheit you want a conversion in celsius approximately if you want to do just subtract it with 30 and divide it by 2 it's one approximation you will get uh, you will not get the exact number subtract it by 30 and divided by 2 it will get an celsius scale from the fahrenheit but it will be approximate so this kind of uh, formula need to be uh, insisted on celsius to fahrenheit conversion again uh, if celsius into 9 by 5 plus 32 this is a per perfect formula if you want one approximation what i said usually for uh, remembering it we do like that so and then for kelvin kelvin whenever we are writing kelvin that should not be uh, degrees Degree Kelvin should not be written. Should be written three hundred Kelvin. That's all. As for Celsius, twenty-seven <coughs> degrees Celsius. <coughs> so Kelvin minus two seventy-three point one five will give degree Celsius. So this is again a conversion from Kelvin to Celsius. From Celsius to Kelvin again addition of two seventy-three point one five. So approximation is decimal value. So you can go to the Now um, either below uh, before number three not three Kelvin. So this is one conversion which is which has to be insisted on. Am I clear, teachers? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Shall I yes, continue? So yes, some of the books, if you take yes, some of the books, will not give us the conversion between Fahrenheit 
uh, Kelvin and Celsius. Some of the readers will not uh, insist on this. Some of them do not, even in NCRT, we don't have this. But uh, any Preja question paper or uh, even um, uh, any Olympiad questions will definitely for class seven will uh, focus on this conversion. And we can also speak about Kelvin, which is the standard unit. And uh, similarly for uh, SI unit of heat is uh, joules. We should also say about, because they are learning about SI unit in class six. They'll, uh, we are introducing a term called SI unit. So I ask them to collect SI units of different things. SI unit of current is what ampere, SI unit of length, SI unit of mass, all these things. Just let them see and uh, identify the SI unit first. Don't worry, like uh, whether the child will understand. No, let them first collect SI units. So slowly, when they go for higher classes, they will know what is um, how to use an SI unit, why it is used. All these things will get, will get clarified on its own. And similarly, you can also give them this kind of homework uh, teachers during the holidays. Like ask them to learn first 20 elements in the periodic table or 40 elements. Some children even like to learn all 118 elements in the periodic table. Yes, they want to prove themselves better than others. So they every day five five element with the symbol. Every day, if they keep reading five, five elements with a symbol, even for your children also, you can try this. If the child is very much interested, uh, it will be like uh, remembering the element and uh, relating it to the symbol. That's all. Right? So five, five elements a day with a symbol. And almost um, easily you can read 120 elements. When children are learning so many, they are learning by heart. Why can't they learn only these many elements and their symbols? It will be very fun for them. They'll ask each other questions and they'll be able to, like that SI units also. Ask them to learn SI units whenever they find time, uh, just for a quiz sake or something like that. And I'll continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. So after this, we have uh, uh, Celsius to Kelvin conversion, conversion between, uh, uh, this is out of interest only. And, uh, and there is one video I have uh, got for sharing with you about the clinical thermometer. This was a nice video I'll share in the uh, chat box. Or shall I share now? Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, yes. This video is very clear, so I thought I'll share with you. Okay, I'll share it there. Now, the next part is after this different types of uh, the different types of uh, units for measuring the temperature. The next part is the transfer of heat. Again, transfer of heat is very very important uh, because. Um, from class seven only, this is learned. Uh, this is very much new for them. Three types of transfer of heat. Uh, heat actually flows from a body from a ha having a higher temperature to a body with a lower temperature, which they call it as transfer of heat. There are three modes of transfer. One is conduction, convection, and radiation. So from a hot object to a cold object, it can be an object or a solid, or it can be a liquid, or it can be a gas. Mm. Liquid and gases together are called as fluids. We generally call them as fluids. So conduction is mainly seen in the solids. Convection is seen in the liquids and gases and radiation where there is no medium required. All this to be insisted on. Heat flow, flow of heat energy. We call this as thermal energy. There is other way of calling heat as thermal energy. There are many laws put forward by Kelvin called as the thermodynamic laws of thermodynamics because of which only he was known much and uh, is, uh, Kelvin is used as an SI unit. His uh, name is used as a unit because of the thermodynamic loss, right? So, and also uh, all these things can be insisted. Thermal engineering, there's something called thermal engineering, thermodynamics, all these are branches of uh, science which deals with heat, heat transfer. So this is very basic for what they are going to learn in engineering as they grow bigger, right? So the process of um, uh, transfer of heat can be in three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, conduction. What is conduction? Conduction need to be explained only with the help of an activity. Very nicely, it can be explained with the help of an activity, with the iron rod and keeping the wax and then uh, pinning up the 
uh, with the help of uh, wax, we keep the pins there and heat it with the candle. We can see the uh, pins dropping one by one down. Slowly, the heat moves from the hotter end to the colder end. And this can also be, you can also make them understand this um, very nicely. Uh, when mother cooks, by chance, mother is keeping one, uh, uh, any ladle inside the vessel, she leaves it. And then you go and touch, we feel the heat. And that is also conduction. And for the, to avoid uh, getting your uh, uh, hands uh, burnt only, uh, all these uh, ladles have a wooden handle or the cookers have a bakelite handle. All this can be given as examples while teaching conduction. And then automatically the next thing is uh, classification of substances based on their capacity to pass heat as conductors and insulators need to be explained. The next part is about conductors and insulators. So this activity, again, you can uh, do it as a demonstration. Yes. Anybody is trying to ask me something? Okay. So while uh, doing the activity, you can ask the child to note down uh, the demonstration, like uh, what is the aim of the experiment? What are the materials required, procedure? What is the observation and what is the inference? And finally, the child will be able to define conduction. It's the process of heat transfer in solids from the hotter end to the colder end and the molecules are in contact with each other. In solids, the molecules are closely packed or tightly packed. When you are speaking about conduction, convection and radiation, we should also insist about how the molecules are packed in solids, in liquids and gases, little away in liquids, far away in gases, that also need to be mentioned. Then only they'll understand it better. So different examples for conduction, you keep a spoon in the boiling water, you will see the uh, heat in the tip of the spoon also. But if you have a, ba a Bakelite handle or a wooden handle, you cannot feel it. All this is because of conduction. All this can be explained. And then classification of materials as insulators and conductors because of their property to allow heat to pass through them need to be explained. And the use of insulators uh, in day-to-day -day life can be explained. A lot of, uh, uh, what to say, uh, hot questions can be asked based on this. Uh, why do cookers have a Bakelite handle, right? And why do, uh, like this many types of questions, why should there be a, a, what is it, copper bottom vessels? Why should we use copper at the base of the uh, metals? What is the purpose of copper bottom bottomed vessels? Conductor of heat. Yes, it conducts more. So it gets heated up faster. All these are only uh, based on conduction and insulation. Right. Then next comes convection. Now, when we are speaking about convection, it's the process of heat transfer which happens in liquids and gases. First, the hot once the hotter part is there, some uh, see, for example, the gas gets heated up becomes hot it moves and then the colder uh, one will come and occupy that place and gets heated up this is what is happening either in water in the liquid or in the case of gas in both the cases convection is seen in fluids fluids are the substances that which can flow it includes both the liquids as well as the gases that needs a mention so here we can uh, speak about again this activity can be performed as demonstration Potassium permanganate uh, can be taken and the round bottom flask, you drop it, automatically the color moves out. So from the hoppers, the water which is closer there gets heated up, moves out, and the colder one comes to its place. So we can see the movement of the color. That is, that is the reason we use the potassium permanganate here to see how the color travels. Even if potassium permanganate is not available, we can even use a drop of ink. That will show how there is movement of the water inside and conviction when we are speaking immediately we should relate it to the ocean currents we should also relate it to the land breeze and the sea breeze land breeze and sea breeze all this happens only because of conviction so hot air has a tendency to rise up the cool air comes and occupies this place and land breeze and sea breeze 
So in this case, uh, uh, here, uh, the particles, in the case of convection, the liquids and the fluids, you can say how the particles are arranged. They are a little away, not like solids. That also need to be mentioned. And then um, convection of air, you, you can see here how with the hot air rises up. You can feel the hot in the above, but not in the sides. So hot air has a tendency to rise up. So this one is uh, land breeze and sea breeze. Now coming to the land breeze and sea breeze, sea breeze, breeze means cool air. Sea breeze means cool air comes from the sea. And this happens only during the day. That has to be insisted. Land breeze means cool air comes from the land. There should never be any confusion in this. Breeze means cool air. When it comes from the land, we call that as land breeze. It happens at night. So uh, when the cool air is coming from the land, the hot air above the sea has to rise up. So the cool air from the land comes and occupies the place. That needs a mention. This happens at night. Similarly, sea breeze means cool air from the sea is moving out towards the land. So the hot air on the land rises up. The cool air from the sea comes to its place. It happens during the day. That's all. So this they will learn till uh, class 10 in social also they will be learning. So they will be very much familiar from fourth standard. They will start learning this. There should not be any confusion. Daytime and nighttime, they should not get confused. That's all. Hot air has a tendency to rise up. This is a very important property because the following lessons also we are uh, teaching them about hot air rising up. And the uh, provision of uh, windows at our level and ventilators at a higher level. Yes, teachers, tell me, why do we have windows at our level, whereas ventilators at a higher level? And only the cool air enters to the room. Yes. The warm air moves upwards, so upwards. the ventilator is at the top of the wall. Yes. So the warm air or the hot air moves out. Exhaust fans are also kept at a higher level. So that the hot air has a tendency to go out. It can easily go out. Whereas the windows are at our level only. So that the cool air comes inside through the windows. That is the purpose. That can be explained. Nowadays, earlier, we had uh, uh, ACs to our level only. Now we are keeping the ACs at a higher level. The purpose is the hot air has to be going out. And that hot air is taken in by the ACs and converted. All the heat from that hot air is taken out and then it is sent inside. So it comes down as the cool air. That can be explained. So many um, uh, things that are happening around us can be explained. When you are keeping a candle, burning a candle, you can see the uh, smoke going up. The reason is hot air tries to rise up. Everywhere this hot air, based on that many applications are there. Many higher order questions can be framed. So sea breeze and land breeze and movement of air need to be explained. And this again, another, I will try whether it's opening. If not, at the end, I will uh, show this. Because you know, both the things simultaneously, my data is not supporting, I believe. And uh, when we are teaching about conduction and convection, this is one um, simple activity teaches. For conduction, they are in contact. They are touching each other. And they are passing the uh, ball or a book. So that is conduction. Because the molecules are in contact with each other, they are closely packed in a solid. So that can be explained for conduction. Whereas for convection, they run and hand over the ball to their friends. They do not throw. They just uh, hand over the ball. That is convection. That can be called as the convection. They run and hand over. That's what the hot air is uh, heated up, comes down, and cold air will come and occupy that place and gets heated up. So there is one movement, right? They are not closely packed, instead they are little away. That has to be explained. Whereas in radiation, they stand apart and they just throw the ball to each other. Very often, this is what is used for explaining conduction, convection, and radiation. You can also try this as an activity to explain them. Make some poor boys come closer. Ask them to hold the book in their hands, stand closer, and then show them this is conduction. Convection, you can show them by handing over little away. Whereas for uh, uh, radiation, they should throw. Where there is no uh, necessity of a medium. Can you follow teachers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Usually, this activity is used for explaining conduction, convection, and radiation. The next one is radiation, right? What is radiation? The process by which heat is transferred from one place to another without the help of a medium right so radiation from the sun the heat is uh, uh, from this the heat from the sun reaches us as radiation that and it can also 
travel through vacuum there is no play uh, there is no air from the sun till it reaches the earth there is no atmosphere so it can travel through vacuum it doesn't need any uh, medium and um, uh, all this can be explained when you are keeping a cup of uh, hot water in a uh, uh, in on a table after some time why what happens to the heat it cools down what happens to the heat it is radiated to the surrounding it goes to the surrounding so all this can be explained as radiation are you able to understand teachers a lot of questions can be asked based on this a lot especially heat lesson is uh, i feel uh, a lot of hot questions like why should be uh, is it better to wear two blankets or only one single blanket is it better to wear, yes one. why do we prefer two blankets instead of one single blanket to keep us warm why should we wear woolen uh, clothes during the winter uh, why should we uh, perhaps the air air is trapped inside the body it helps to maintain the body yes. the body undergoes the endothermic reaction it does not uh, lose its temperature gains its energy so if you are wearing the warm dresses our body undergoes the endothermic reactions uh, so it helps to maintain our body temperature yes it helps to air uh, if you are air air acts as a trap air is trapped in between the two blankets so it is not let out so it keeps us warm even if you are wearing a woolen clothes in winter season hair h a i r hair in between the hair wool is nothing but the hair fleece of the animal in between the hair a i r air is trapped and therefore Uh, once it is trapped it does not it's a very poor conductor of heat air air is a poor conductor of heat so it traps the heat and uh, keep us warm so all this can be insisted and when two blankets together keeps us more warm right and then uh, painting a uh, white uh, in a uh, buildings during the summer reflects the heat whereas a dark color paint will absorb the heat absorbs the heat yes because it can absorb the heat reflection of a white white color we wear white clothes during the uh, summer whereas dark colored clothes why should we have an umbrella during the summer how does we during the summer season why the hot water is being cool uh, always uh, because at the tap uh, in outside of the tap we have a minute tap tiny holes uh, the the rays the hot rays falls on the part of the wall so the water molecules alone they evaporate it's the water the hot has does not enters the pot so we get a cool water in the pot ah, this activity is also we have to yes. teach for the children yes yes cool water the pot inside the pot the water is mm, uh, kept cool because in between the uh, pot is made of mud in between that you have small pores where air is trapped again air is a poor conductor so maintains the temperature inside even no sometimes we see uh, people carrying big ice blocks surrounded by jute jute bag sacks you must have seen no chalk uh, pai they say no with that they'll uh, uh, cover the uh, big ice blocks have you ever seen teachers the purpose is jute is also uh, having small pores in between where air is trapped so it acts as a uh, poor conductor it's a very poor conductor does not allow the heat to escape so uh, even when at home also you can try you want to keep one uh, water bottle you have it is very hot and you want uh, that water bottle to retain the heat means you can uh, surround it or uh, wrap it with a woolen cloth so it will keep it warm right because it uh, it's a uh, insulator it avoids the transfer of heat all this are many number of examples like this can be given from our day to day life even for conduction that uh, usually asked question is a ring keep one uh, a ring and uh, draw one uh, candle below keep one ring okay as a uh, ring as a, a small structure like this that is holding the ring and then keep a candle below a round ring okay mark two points center as in a ring mark one point as p this side as q this side as r and you can ask the question like this which direction will the heat flow from a uh, center point from p to q or from p to r which direction will the heat flow happen 
so uh, in conduction they generally learn as a long um, uh, metal strip only no they are learning as a long metal strip when it is heated the pins are falling down but when you are going to show it as a ring they get little confused actually when you are going to heat a ring the heat flow will be on both the directions simultaneously heat will flow in both the direction so that can also be explained you are going to keep in um, center position as o and p and q on either side from o to p and o to q the same time heat will be flowing because the shape is in the form of a ring that can be insisted so many hot questions and based on sea breeze and uh, land breeze your house is facing uh, east and direction near the beach right uh, which time you will get the sea breeze uh, why all the questions like this can be posted or which direction will the tree move during the day the sea is facing that side so sea breeze is during the day that uh, if the tree is like this sea breeze will be towards the land so it will be moving towards the land the direction can be drawn so many questions from this heat lesson especially hot questions yes teachers are you able to follow yes yes uh, so assessment becomes very very important the second part i will explain every day i told you something about teaching also i will explain now i will speak about assessment a few slides why is assessment important what are the various ways of assessing children now after this yes so the word assessment has come from a latin word uh, verb which means to sit with okay so uh, it is assessment is uh, something we do with and for students and not to students so based on this only we are doing the assessment gathering interpreting recording and we call assessment results as the evidence it is only our evidence for the teaching it is the evidence for our teaching now this is a nice picture which will uh, help us to understand see for everybody we are keeping the same task what is the task given you are not able to see my now we are able to see yes ma'am you are able to see it comes to me like uh, participants are not able to see your application you are able to see the picture yes, yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. yes, yes. so whenever we speak about assessment in india we usually use this slide the purpose is we are asking every child to go for the same type of examination one child will be very good in singing one child will be very good in dancing but for everybody we are only assessing them based on a paper pen test that's all one child will be very good in doing a project some child uh, some children will be very good in uh, oral work a debater right but everybody we are only giving them a paper pen test so is this correct do you think is this correct uh we are all asking uh, different types of animals to climb the tree is it possible for an elephant to climb the tree or a fish to climb the tree no ma'am Uh, no ma'am uh, this is uh, our system our educational system to be blamed so for this one lee uh, now with the help of this uh, national educational policy they are trying to bring in not only educational policy even before this one lee they have started with formative assessments different types of uh, Uh, for internal marks are being given based on the formative assessment how the child performs if not in a written test at least he has a chance to score in all those things during an experiment he speaks nicely he understands nicely or he is able to do a project nicely art integration by means of a uh, music or by means of dance at least he is able to get some marks means we are providing him right so we use assessment as a tool uh, to understand the academic readiness learning progress skill acquisition all this are being assessed so we use assessment as a tool now there are four ways of organizing assessment either it can be an individual assessment or it can be a group assessment or it can be a peer assessment or a self assessment usually we go for individual assessment the teacher will assess the child individually either by a paper pen test or sometimes we'll ask him to come and speak and we'll assess the child it can be a group assessment when a group of children are doing a project right and very rarely we go for a peer assessment what is this peer assessment teachers any clues 
it's again in the group form. Yes. Is group form. It's a group form only. But if one child is presenting, the other children should assess and say without yes. any prejudice. There should yes. not be any prejudice, right? Yes. yes. So that is only peer assessment. It's not like if one child is speaking about something, we will allow other children to give to assess his work and give marks for it. Either if it is um, give credit points for it, right? So that is only peer assessment. If other child other children are able to understand his thoughts better and say very nice, right? Then we will uh, appreciate this person. Sometimes what is the drawback here is. If they have some prejudice on this child, if they have some uh, not having a good rapport with this child, they give a wrong assessment also. That will happen in the peer assessment. And self-assessment is for the child to understand on his own and assess his abilities. Many times we will leave this uh, option open for the child. You tell me whether you have understood this topic, how much you have understood. Uh, it's 80 percent. You are clear? I used to ask children, are you, uh, you have understood it 80%, 20% only, 30% only? Uh, how much do you think uh, you have to work more on this topic to understand it better? How much do you think I should explain you more? Where do you think you have not understood? All these things we can ask the child. Based on this, he'll be able to assess himself. Like by his uh, versions, by his answers, he'll be able to assess himself. That is a self-assessment. At the end of every class, we will assess ourselves also, right, teachers? We will think, uh, uh, see, some classes we'll feel, uh, I, I, I was able to reach every child this class. Some classes uh, we will feel, if we ask some questions, if we post some question to the child who will never open his mouth and he never answers, he doesn't understand or a child that slept, all these things will help us to understand we are not pakka that day. Maybe uh, we have not reached the child. Some more uh, questions will help. So that is a kind of self-assessment for us. Similarly, there will be a self-assessment for every child also. You should also know that you should get trained for this self-assessment also. Some children are very smart nowadays. They can assess themselves and they'll say, at least you can ask them a question. How much did you understand today? How much is the topic very uh, good for you? 50%? 20%, 30% like that, you ask him. He will let him come out with the answer. That will help him to understand his uh, rate of learning. Right? And he will compare himself with the other child. If one boy is saying 50%, the other boy is saying 30%, then he will understand, okay, the topic was clear for him for 50%. Only I must have missed out. I must have looked here and there or something like this. He will understand his mistake. Next time, he will try to correct himself. That also happens. So these are all the different ways of assessing. And the, what are the tools of assessment? Some of the tools which we use. Our oral interaction. Very often our oral interaction is very good. That will help us immediately to locate the good child. Uh, locate the participating child. Our oral interaction. Even in a new class. We know some of the children are uh, uh, attention seekers. Right? And easily we can understand by the oral interaction. And then... Um, giving them um, diagrams, numerical problems, and uh, performing activities, asking them to write the reports, asking them to pen down the demonstration like uh, aim, materials required. And some people will not speak, but they'll write very nicely. They'll, uh, uh, they'll be able to reproduce whatever you have spoken in their writing, but they will never speak in the class. So that is also needed to make children write and make children write science puzzles, crossword puzzles that the ma'am was insisting, Anuradha ma'am, puzzles, crossword puzzles, ask them to make a crossword puzzle, right? A small crossword puzzle, four letter word, down, across, and this, uh, this um, a type of uh, heat transfer where no medium is required, begins with the letter R, and the number of uh, uh, letters are R A D I A T I O N. So eight uh, letters like that. You can uh, give him one example. Put the boxes. Ask him to continue like that. You can make uh, make the child do puzzles and projects. Very often we give them projects. A lot of projects we are giving them on pollution, uh, on water pollution, air pollution, the best ways to reduce pollution, homework assignments, class assignments, and science exhibitions. Nowadays, um, we are also concentrating on science exhibitions. 
and different um, uh, different uh, uh, exhibits are uh, explained by the children new things that they explore all this even uh, written test field trips and science journals that is one uh, nice activity teachers you also try to bring in this uh, science journals is they have to make a journal and they can take information from google or any other source but it should be a proper information it should not be a wrong information and they should collect the information and make it as a journal and make a journal is a small magazine right and they have to submit it to you as an activity you can uh, evaluate it as an activity for pt1 also some five boys together can make one journal uh, some five pages in the let them present it as a journal to you and let there be one uh, index let that be the contents listed down the page numbers everything can be given as a magazine so that is again a nice um, uh, another new way of testing the children collecting information as they collect information they have to uh, gather the inform information compile it and give it to you as a journal and they can even incorporate nice pictures based on their information the learning will be more right so that is how all, all these things are different uh, different yes all these things are different methods or the tools for assessment video visible teachers the audio on yes ma'am yes ma'am let's talk about heat transfer yes what we're really talking about here is how energy moves specifically heat energy and how it gets from point a to point b whether it be here on the surface of the earth up in the atmosphere or even out in space heat transfer occurs really in three ways and these include conduction convection and radiation let's take a look at each of these starting with conduction this is heat transfer as a result of molecular contact. The best way to understand conduction is by thinking about an example. So here I have a metallic spoon and I imagine holding a match underneath it. Now what we know is that that spoon is going to heat up and not just the part of the spoon that's over the match, but rather the spoon as a whole. And the reason this happens is because of conduction energy from the flame is causing the molecules within the spoon to vibrate and that's transferring energy from one to the next to the next to the next until the entire spoon has warmed up that heat has transferred throughout the entire material conduction is going to happen most effectively in solid materials but let's not forget about convection and radiation let's look at convection this is heat transfer through or as a result of density differences. Again, let's grab that match and let's think about this for a minute. I think we all know it's probably not the best idea to hold your hand above an open flame like this. And that's because a lot of the heat energy generated by that flame is going to rise. That is purely because of the process of convection. You see, what's happening is the flame is causing the air to expand. And when it expands, it becomes less dense than the surrounding air and therefore floats upwards. And with it goes some of that heat energy. That's what convection is all about. And this is going to occur most effectively within liquids and gases. Finally, let's think about radiation. Radiation is transferred by wave motion. Let's pull that I think we know that because of convection, heat is going to rise, but it's also going to travel outwards in the form of waves of energy, electromagnetic waves. And that's the third type of heat transfer. Radiation is really interesting in that it doesn't need a material for it to travel. So this can occur out in open, empty space. In fact, this is how energy travels from Earth's sun to the surface of the Earth. And so if we look back, we have our three types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. And it's important to know the key word that goes with each one. For convection, it's going to be density differences. For conduction, it's going to be contact. And for radiation, it's going to be waves. We can sum all three types of heat transfer up 
in one diagram by looking at something as simple as a campfire. Imagine that you're camping and you hold a pot of water or stew above that flame. Well, right now in this one picture, we are seeing all three types of heat transfer take place. There's conduction happening as the flame is transferring energy directly to and throughout the pot as a result of molecular contact. Additionally, there's convection as heat from both the boiling pot and the flame itself is rising up as a result of density differences. And finally, there's radiation occurring all around the campfire as energy travels away from the flame in the form of electromagnetic waves. And that's a quick look at heat transfer. Yes. Nice one. Nice video. Ah, yes. Yes, and also, you know, whenever I am uh, speaking about this conduction, convection, and radiation, there is one story, Akbar and Birbal story. You remember, teachers, uh, Akbar, uh, he will say, will anybody stand in this cold water? And one person will uh, come and stand looking at the bulb. He'll say, from the bulb only, he received that warmth. He say, must have uh, told about radiation. And then uh, Birbal will keep one pot at a higher level and keep this. That can also be shared. That can also be shared with students. Okay, and then uh, he will not be able to cook the food. He'll say a few minutes I'll come and I, he'll keep the pot at a higher level. The pot will not be in contact. There he'll try to uh, explain the conduction uh, because it is not in contact, so it is not getting cooked. And uh, Akbar, he said about radiation from the bulk only, the heat rays must have radiated to the person who is standing in the cold water. So we can also speak about this story.